Crestuomo, this man has made 16 wins, 56 podium. Wow, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I know it because I'm Mr. Helmet. Uh, you know, just uh, on a part-time interview as a, as a musician critic, but I am Mr. Helmet, you know that. Mm -hmm. uh, this man has made four pole positions, no, uh, you know, four. Yeah, not many pole positions. Four, four just yeah. four, three best laps. Uh -huh. So, two yeah. championships with two different bikes, yeah. just you and another one. Straight Corsa. Uh -huh. You won with Ducati, you're the last one to win a world championship in Superbike with Honda. Uh -huh. Yeah, still, yeah. yes. Yeah. And uh, Eight years ago. You are lucky because every time I get an interview with you, you, you leave something good. You know, first interview, the week after you won a title, the second one. Mm -hmm. Second interview, you had a brilliant podium in Monza. Mm -hmm. Third interview here in Rome, the week after you managed to to making your first single coming out. Mm -hmm. So, probably <laughs> you expect something good from this hopefully. interview next week. Hopefully. What about? <laughs> well, hopefully I can maybe play the arena in, uh, in, in, in Rome or something out Milan. <laughs> I can see that I, this, is, this is about me because it, it was scheduled before, but probably I can give you a good luck as, as I usually do. Well, it's, um, I, it's really, really nice. The, it was really nice this morning um, being at the airport yeah. Um, because the last time I was at an airport, um, other than holiday, um, was to race motorcycles, and I had an amazing seventeen-year career. Because it, someone told me that outside that it is the first time you play, you make a, an official exhibition outside UK. Complete. Yeah, this is definitely the first time. But I say that it is, is not true. Because you played several times in the World Superbike Circus yeah. in Misano and you played... Yeah, yeah. So, but it was not official. You, were, you still were a rider, you know? Yeah, exactly. I, I did a couple of um, piano exhibitions for, for, for Superbikes and, uh, and MotoGP. And, um, and my covers band that I played with before yeah. Crash uh, played a, a few occasions. Um, but for Totem, uh, this, is, this is the very first time outside the UK. When I heard about you playing, because I... I, I used to play. I studied music. I was a cello player, you know. Cello? Yeah, wow. cello player. Wow. Yes. I, probably I don't look like a cello player, but no, I was. No, no. And they told me, yeah, there is a rider who sings. Okay, I said, another rider who wants to sing, another rider <laughs> who pretends to sing like there are many. Instead, when I heard you, when I listened to you first time, fuck, he has the voice. <laughs> fuck, he can play. <laughs> so, <laughs> now there is no more Tor 52 land. Now is Tosaland in in effect in full effect. Yeah, it, it, yeah. It's um, um after I retired from racing to, yeah. with my wrist injury. Um, it was really really tough to to make the decision. Um, I made the decision quite quick because um, I instantly knew that without the wrist uh, being able to bend, um, and now I've had a second operation with four screws. Yeah. Um, it's it's not very good at all now. So this is um. The maximum I can bend. The uh, you told me so. <laughs> this is the worst injury that a rider can occur. With. <laughs> Completely impossible yeah. to turn the race. I, yeah. I, I came back for Silverstone and uh, Nurburgring, and I was riding like with my arm. Yeah. Um, the left was okay because I could turn my arm, but the right I couldn't open the throttle because of, of the leg. Yeah, and probably you don't remember because you have, you had so many interviews. But you told me personally, mate, I'm scared for the others. I was scared for the uh, why I was scared for the others was um, um, I all of a sudden had no control about the position yeah. I was finishing, and that eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And every time it was a lottery, wasn't it? And, but I was so frustrated because um, this was still fast and this was still fast, um, and this was putting me in a position that I'd never been before for a long time. And um, so this didn't respect your will. Exactly. <laughs> You wanted to turn it, then it did. And the frustrations were so high that I, I, I could tell that I was going to take that out on, on the motorcycle, which wasn't the right thing to do. So. But the very good thing is, because I am a cello player, so I've been compelled to study piano, mm -hmm. that you can assume a really classic piano position right now. Mm -hmm. And you with with your wrist, you and you can't. Really. So you want to keep a really classic piano position. So you, well, the, the you problem is that the, the bike was up and down. Yeah. And the piano is right and left, and and I've lost uh, also the. Did the you? Rhythm. So I, I have to stand to the left. Of so the you're piano. gonna move it like Jerry Lee. 
<laughs> I, I've got like a unique style now to play the piano, you know, so um, don't think it's some special thing I do. <laughs> you know, I, I remember your right hand, it wasn't that bad, so, but what about making your exhibition in front of people that most of them, excluding uh, me, I don't mm -hmm. know, don't know you wear what you wear, you've been what you've been, this is strange. Well, this is the nice thing about it, because... Um, I, I, I wrote the, the songs, I, I lived in a hotel for eight months. When I finished the racing, I lived in a hotel in the north of England, um, writing the songs with Toby Jepsen, who was the lead singer of the Little Angels, a very successful band. Um, I know. And that was it. Um, I just knew that if I can't do that, um, I want to do the, uh, the other thing that was so special to me. And I, I studied music before racing, so um, it was always something that I relaxed to whilst I was racing. But um, when I couldn't race anymore, it was something that I needed to do to um, to put the same amount of dedication into and uh, and see what was possible. And um, I mean, we've just been supporting Status Quo and Reef, the Little Angels, the Darkness, um, and now to be sort of supporting Michael Monroe in Italy. Um, and for Italy to have an interest in the band to bring us out here to perform. Um, is a is such a, an amazing compliment and it's really exciting. It is. Then you have the possibility to understand if you really can do this job. Yeah. Comparing to such a monster, such monsters uh, you had. To... Well, my, the the only challenge as a racer, the only challenge was me and the bike. Yeah. Really, we had a massive crowd at, at, when I was racing. A hundred thousand people sometimes at Brands Hatch and Monza. Um, but my only challenge was with my bike. If I lost the challenge, I was in hospital. And if yeah. I won the challenge, I had a trophy. Yeah. Um, no. With music. It's, uh, you know, with status quo, there was 4,000 people all staring straight at you, going, come on then, entertain me. And, uh, okay, but 4,000 quality people, because if you go to a status quo concert, uh, probably you understand something about what you are going oh, to no, watch completely. and see. But I so. only had to, before <laughs> with the I had one thing to, to, come, yeah. uh, to, to get right. Yeah. Uh, to convince 4,000 people about what you're doing. Uh, um, um, luckily... With Toby Jepson I wrote with, he's been such a good mentor for me. Um, he's co-managing the band, and um, he, he told me a lot about um, if you. I know you want to write rock songs, and I know you want to write an album, um, but uh, it's the conviction um, about how you present it that will win. Yeah. That will win the fight. Uh, win the fight. So you told me that you took your decision to be to turn your former rider career to into. Uh, an actual musician career in a very short time. Ancients say a decision must be taken in seven breaths. Mm -hmm. So you decided to do it quickly yeah. before losing yourself or it was... Well, it, it wasn't really a decision I took. It was, um, uh, I knew that with uh, waking, waking up to nothing um, was going to uh, be a, a very dark place for me. Yeah. Um, so uh, when I couldn't uh, uh, wake up to, to, to be a rider, um, uh, I, I knew I had to focus on something else immediately. Um, and luckily, I've got something else in my life, and, and that was music. And you're lucky because I talked. I talked. I was talking with other riders. You know, Max Biaggi himself yeah. said, "Fuck! I have to wake up in the morning, and I can train, mm -hmm. but I don't have to." And this changed yeah. things dramatically yeah. because you know, right. it's like winning lottery. Okay. Just have to spend your money, but you know what I mean. Yeah. A rider is, is not made of spending money; he's made of he's made well, of results of of Max Biaggi achievement. And, you know, and all the champions. They, uh, um, what you don't realize is uh, um, when when you get to the, such a, a level uh, in any sport or any career, um, you, you forget that you are waking up and have an opportunity yeah. to achieve your absolute goal in life and something that you love doing. Um, but you don't think of it that way. You, you wake up trying to achieve it. Yeah. Um, so when it's taken away, um, that that uh, the, the the gap um, uh, is is very difficult to fill. It must be a really difficult situation. You know, a lot of amazing writers like Troy Bayliss. You know, come yeah. back or not, come back or not. People well, ask well, you to. What come is back. nice with the Max Biaggi and Troy Bayliss is, uh, from what you've just said there, actually. Um, makes me a bit happier, almost, because I had to have those feelings yeah. at 30 years old. They were 40 years old and still felt the same. So um, even though I retired earlier, 
and I felt I had 10 years. Um, now I think if I still had another 10 years, I'd still feel the same. Yeah, you can, you, you know? can, you are a rookie for other, you have yeah. another 10 years of rookie ship for, um, for you. So even three. if we retired at 60, we'd still feel the same because it was so, we, we love it so much. Um, if, if I was going to feel that at 40 after having maybe another two world championships or whatever would happen, um, at least now with this life, um, I, I was young enough to, to, to try something else. Then you, can, you, get, you got married later, you know, you built your, your life complete, in a completely diff, different way, you know, like, yeah. you know, uh, many riders uh, get married young, you know, like many sportsmen, yeah. you, you, are, you, you did it after, probably yeah. you, are set, you are building your life yeah. more responsibly. You know, racing I was my relationship. relationship. My racing was my relationship. Okay. With that. You see, with such a focus that like, we're talking about, um, when you wake up, you had such a focus in life, and you never got lonely because the the, the how hard yeah. it was to achieve such yeah, a high thing was you were so busy and so focused, and, and and there was never one minute in a day that you didn't think about winning motorcycle races. Um, you know, you have another racing career somehow, yeah. somehow yeah. starting again. Then uh, now you are like something of a national championship ready to debut for the world yeah. one yeah. Uh, do you have the same feelings you know well, uh, i've got a wild card today you have a wild card today <laughs> yeah yeah with no possibility to fall down for the stage i hope well, you never know. <laughs> no, don't uh, don't bet on it but and um, no my my uh, my i was asking myself is did you realize you were going to be the James 52 land you had, you later become, and now, do you have the same feeling about your career, or you are more in doubt, or...? Um, really, um, music is very, very complicated compared to racing. It, with racing, if I finish first, second or third, everybody was pretty happy. I was pretty happy, the yeah. team were happy, the fans were happy. Um, if I finished eighth, they weren't so happy. Um, with music, I, f I can feel I've sang and played the best I've ever played, but there'll always be someone that the music is not really their taste, or the band is not really. You their can't taste. control it. You can't. You you can control less things than in racing. Is it? Less is things it in music. Correct? Yeah. In music yeah. than in racing. Yeah. yeah. Because you know you can do the best. Yeah. Thinking about yourself like having done the best, yeah. having written the best yeah. one, the yeah. best team. Yeah. But shit, they don't like. Everybody's it. taste is different <laughs> with music. Yeah. Yeah. So, but it's um. With a, with a gap on your wrist that is fucking condemning for a piano player. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. But it's what what is nice is um, last year when I started the band, I wrote the songs. It took about it took about twelve months to write the songs and record the songs. Yeah. And then I got the band together um, afterwards to then start playing the songs live because uh, it's. In, there's also you know from you can write the songs, but actually then to go and perform them live. And to sound exactly the same as the record is, is, is not an, an easy thing. Um, so I got to that point and last year there was about probably about 120 people at the start. Uh, and that was mainly bike fans wondering what I'd been doing for yeah. the last 18 months because I'd not been at the racetrack and I'd been living in a hotel. Um, uh, and then now, two weeks ago uh, in Birmingham, um, in England, um, we had 500 people for the first time. 500 people um, is a lot. <laughs> yeah. And for the second year... Um, and there's not too many uh, racing shirts anymore, you know. Yes. Um, it's all kind of uh, the people that's heard it on radio now. And, so um, I am one of the last. Yeah, You're trying to eliminate last. us. No, no, no. You no, don't want no. us anymore. This is okay. the first time in Italy. Okay, okay. So, okay. so you really can good. understand, probably. Yeah. But there's a transition, you know. And I always knew there was going to be a transition because... Uh, it's a matter of time. In a couple of years, yo, Jeff Stones is it's a fucking musician. Hopefully. He can, he can go, he can ride by the very good as well. <laughs> Does it? Mm, probably. You know, <laughs> this is what you want, yeah. right? It's what what Completely. you are working on. Now. Completely, because um, uh, the effort and the dedication I put in, um, and my heritage with music. Yeah. Not everybody really fully understands uh, my heritage with with music, and um, uh, which means I have to go out on stage uh, and, uh, and and show people. My opinion is that I'm a very bad motorcyclist. You know. Uh, and a very bad musician as well, but I can understand you. But because if you can break 
300 kilometers per hour on a, in Monza. Mm -hmm. Probably you can face this out tonight. Probably uh, even if it's it not the same, if it's not the thing, yeah. the same thing. But they out. don't know. You just you just were trying to kill yourself every fucking weekend. Do you know, do, do, do <laughs> the hardest thing about about racing and, and music um, with that with that side of things um, was on sat on the grid with five minutes to go. Yeah. With the cameras and everything. It's the same right. thing as we have in the course in the here in five minutes here, to go. Here in the room before you go out. It's the same. Um, it's a very very similar feeling. Yeah. That's why many musicians try to perform in racing and many. Racing try to perform some some Maybe. something else because Maybe. they needed to, that, that five minutes before. That, bu that, that that's that's the buzz. Um, um, and then if you have a fantastic race or a fantastic gig, and you get the reception, because I had a question tonight actually with an interview. Um, he said, "What's the difference between uh, the podium and the stage?" And usually people just say racing or music, which is very yeah. wide. Yeah. But he said podium and the stage. Well, the podium and the stage are very, very similar. They are. Because the podium, you have everybody watching you, you have everybody clapping and cheering. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think that podium is a result. Yeah. Uh, instead, instead, stage is a, is a, a starting point, you know? Yeah. Uh, because you, you, when you're on stage, you're just starting something. When mm -hmm. you're a podium, you're finished. You know, yeah. you're more relaxed, probably. But with racing, at 300 kilometers, there could be 100,000 people and you can't see any. <laughs> of course. <laughs> the podium is the first time where you get the eye contact. And that's the same, similar thing to, to the stage. What's in your bag? Any bike garment anymore or not? Um, you're not a motorcyclist. Ever. I never did no, motorcycles, no more. No, no, I never was. You, I never was really. I never owned a motorcycle on the road. And I'm uh, stupid because I've asked you just before and you told me you were not a, 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 an everyday motorcycle. No, because... no. But I, no, I've, I, as a kid, um, I, I studied the piano for four years. Then my mum met a new boyfriend. He had a motorcycle. He bought me a motorcycle. Um, and I was so competitive. I found the, uh, the ultimate job for me as an amazing competitive person. You're lucky your mom you didn't know any chess player or exactly whatever, that. probably. That would be much boring, wouldn't it? But probably in 30 years, you're going to quit this career and starting a new one as a chess player, who knows, or a, I don't know, I don't or know a mahjong chess. player, who knows, probably. I've got the patience by then, probably. <laughs> <laughs> but listening to Max Bianchi, probably not. <laughs> no, probably not. So what about your speed record you're trying to attempt next September? I'm informed properly. Yeah. Um, it was supposed to be this year, but we had a few uh, technical problems to develop uh, the bike, and you only get one chance per year with the salt flats. Yes, I know that. Um, so we had to move it to next. Which, year. which kind of? I, I'm, I'm not. Which kind of bike was it? It's a br completely British built bike with a Rolls Royce helicopter engine. Classic. Yeah. Um, so we, we're trying to be uh, like a full British. Uh, so Rolls Royce helicopter engine was it something like a Y2K bike. Are you the turbine. Yeah. 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 It's, but it's rear wheel driven. Yeah. 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 And you, you went, you were, you wanted to do it. Uh, were you sure about it? Um, uh, the, the why I was, I'm, I'm so enthusiastic about it is, um, it, the throttle, the gas is on the foot. So uh, this is perfect for yeah, you. And this is the only way I could have done it. Um, but what really excited me was, um, I know I can't race motorcycles competitively anymore, but this is a chance to actually become something again, world, world's best on a motorcycle. So that's why I'm. Yes, but why not risking your life once a year? Even you know, I, I can't understand your preference. I did. I, I mean, everybody says that about racing motorcycles, but I did that for seventeen years, and I never thought once I was risking my life. Even when I lost a lot of friends and teammates and everything, no. um, I raced and everything. Right. So no, because you, you can't. Because you'd never be fast. In our last interview in Mons, I asked you if this was a song, if this situation was a song, which song was it? And you, you know, answered. You answered me. But how the hell? But how Mid the hell? Oh, Midlow, <laughs> because it's yeah. one, one of your favorite songs. Uh -huh. What about now? I think um, one of my favorite songs, actually, uh, that is really uh, inspirational and was one of the first songs I ever heard rock songs uh, was One Vision by Queen. One Vision? Um, one Vision can represent you perfectly because it's such a complete opera yeah. and, and it envelops some. So some styles which are so different that yeah. one could never imagine they could be put together by yeah. someone, and probably it's something that is mirroring your life enough. Yeah. Some very strange and different things yeah. that they are put together in a amazing harmony, yeah. and you, if you 
if you listen to the first song or an other Queen song like in, you know, Nuendo, they are so different. Mm -hmm. How can they stay together? Instead they can. Yeah. And probably you are trying well, to put together successfully so many different yeah. things. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, the, you know, the lyric of One Vision is, you know, one man, one goal, one vision. You yes. Know? Um, you know, that's really kind of a, a great story for me personally um, about if you want to go and do something, go out there and give it your best shot. This is a very strange interview <laughs> that goes nowhere because we are, we are talking about, you know, but it's so concrete for some times, for, for some aspects, because you're talking about what you were, what you are, and what you want to be with such, you know, self-confidence that is amazing me. So, do you ever have any doubt about it? Uh, uh, um, because it doesn't look so. The only, the only doubt I had about, um, I never had any doubt about racing. Um, I was always confident in myself because you had to be. Um, and I never, I don't doubt myself as a musician, but the only doubt I had after having to finish racing was whether I had um, uh, the, the mental strength to produce an album, get the band, drive the van, book the hotels, book the tour, do everything myself, fund it myself, um, with the, such a disappointment I had from having to be racing up. And make success, making successful in a living of it. Yeah. Because, you know, that wasn't uh, that uh, that's never really been that that was never on the agenda no. um the, the most of it was just personal uh, strength inside with um um cuz uh, your like max Biaggi said about waking up and he, he he wants to train but he doesn't have to train and all of a sudden your energy levels yes half because of you haven't got the uh, drive um and um the boost yeah, but I had I had a I had the boost of being able to write the album and the songs, but my energy level um had, had, had taken a real big knock. So um, along this journey from from last year and now we're here in Italy performing, you know that boost again uh, because more and more people are coming to the shows and that's getting back and back and um, I feel very fortunate that I can do something else that can give me the same feeling um, as I had before. How's your, how's your physical condition now? Apart, apart this one, you know, yeah. yes, are you still keep training because you, yeah. you're in a perfect shape? Yeah, yeah, I keep training. I do the marathon in London um, okay. each year, so um, I enjoy that and do that for charity. And, um, and then that bastard of Sylvain Barrier is, <laughs> is, must be, must be he's taking cooled some down because he's challenging you every time. You know, that I'm so skinny worrying about him. <laughs> <laughs> so no more pictures. Uh, Undressed with your helmet, or I hope uh, not. I, I, you know, I, I was like, I'm talking oh, about me? you, ah. man. Don't, don't, so don't, uh, <laughs> no, don't, don't try to forget <laughs> this, this because you were more undressed than dressed in your career, right? So, you know. Well, if that was a special time and a special moment, and if I can, uh, if I can have a similar special moment on. No, I, I know he took it as a joke because you you didn't take it too seriously, but. but uh -huh. Many writers are taking are taking it seriously, uh, yeah. but you were not. So. No, not at all, not at all. Um, the the funniest thing about me throwing the leathers was um, before the race, even before the race, I asked my manager Roger Burnett to um, get my second set of leathers out of my bag uh, because I'm going to need it for the podium after I throw them in. Yeah. I mean, I was thinking this way before the race, so this is how confident you can get. And uh, so uh, because you told me. I will win my second world title next next week in my in, in your interview. Uh -huh. You told me. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. If, uh, and so it was. So now. You see, when you when uh, when you're a, a, a child growing up um, in a really normal background, normal family, and all through your career, all through your life, through the school, through everything, and you get, yeah, you know, but. It's not, you're never going to have a career really at it, you know, it, it, you're never going to be that good and you go, I am, I am going to be that good, I am going to be So from being six years old, I am going to be, I am going to be. So you're like, you're like a child, you're and still then, like a child. Yeah. And then in the interview with you, I'm going to win that next week, I'm going to show, show you, I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you. But, um, but there's a difference between people that say it um, and there's people that actually know it inside. And, um, I really did... Uh, I work with some great people though.
you know, the teams and the bikes yes. I run for, the Ducati team. I everything was for. magic in that period for you. To be honest, you deserved it, everything. But you can't do <laughs> many that. riders can, can't achieve in three lives yeah. in, 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 what you achieved in yours because of a combination of situations. Oh, and that's you, why I could tell you, I could tell you straight in your eyes that I was going to win the World Championship, but that was because of the bike and the team I was riding for. I okay, think. now tell in my eyes, in, in straight in my eyes, you're going to sell some hundreds of fucking records <laughs> because uh, because this means, because I am, I'm lucky for you, you know that, for the interviews, uh -huh. and when you say something, it usually happens, <laughs> that it's going to happen, <laughs> this thing. Well, I, I'm still competitive. Okay. And my wife has sold 14 million copies. So, uh, is I've got shit. some work to do. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you have. Yes, you have. Are you in Rome the next days? Uh, we are no, just uh, here today and tonight, and then uh, we we're following Michael Monroe for four nights. Um, okay. Pisa, Pisa tomorrow, Serbia, uh, Cervia, and then uh, in Milan for the last night. Okay, it's it's nice for you, but if this wasn't I could invite for the Italian Championship, which is this weekend in Rome. Is it in uh, in Rome? Valle Lunga I'm is in Valle Lunga this championship here. I would but have looked to because, it because uh, honestly, that was, I think we only raced there uh, once, once yeah. or two, or twice, 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 twice. twice. Yes. Um, more a test, plus a test. Fantastic track. Yeah. The first part of the track was just as uh, fun for me as uh, the old Assen first part track. Which doesn't exist anymore. It, exist, <laughs> it was still the best. Yes, because we are specialised in cutting the, the very best of, of tracks. And, and eliminated it. We, we destroyed Monza, we, yeah. we cut it off Monza. Yeah, we yeah. are with this, with yeah. this specialty to, 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 to erase, destroy to destroy the first part of the of trucks when they're good. Longer, the right, the left, the right, the left, and the really fast corners was um, yeah, absolutely fantastic. Yeah, it was fantastic for you because you had the right bike. <laughs> but, it was a quick but, bike. Yeah. <laughs> it was. With no electronics and that, didn't like the slow ones, but it, it, it liked the, uh, the quick ones. <laughs> yeah. So, Tau 52 Land anymore is dead, is living in a, uh -huh. in a, in a, in a, in a hidden part of you Good now, music. and you are uh, a musician, you're full in effect, you're in good, very good shape mentally and physically. Yeah, much better uh, now than two years ago, yeah. Much better now than two years ago. Your friend Sylvain Barrier, we wish him a good luck, uh -huh. we, Sylvain, we were talking about you a lot, maybe too much than you deserved, <laughs> and, and now you have to say, Goodbye to all the people that we had the patience to listen to listen this to, long yeah, interview. Yeah. They got always is the battery it. still okay? Probably, <laughs> probably the, the, the disc space is is full, yeah. and we recorded and we talked for nothing. Oh, they're falling asleep already. Yeah, or or, or, the, or the, the 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 smartphone is full, so we talked for nothing. <laughs> but if we are still talking for someone, please leave a message to Mr. Helmet and all, all your fans. Grazie, Mr. Helmet. Grazie, to T for your support uh, yeah. when I ride motorcycles and. Hopefully now with the music. Yo, make some advertising for your records. You didn't, under, you didn't learn anything. Yeah, I didn't actually. Uh, please, yeah, please buy Renegade. Uh, the album was out uh, about a month ago um, on TotalMusic.com. It's on YouTube and Vivo, the videos. Um, and uh, yeah, hopefully we'll be back in Italy playing soon. I don't have to work on this market side of you. You should be self-boosting more. Than the I know. No, it's I, a new industry should... for me. Yeah, but you... Are known for learning things quickly, so yeah, you, can, but you can be asked. You can I, be asked to to, adver, to sell. I to sell people sell doing it for me in the other teams. <laughs> now it's time to you know you have to do drive the van to book the hotels yeah, yeah, yeah. and to to self advertise your your record. Your record. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, James. No problem, grazie. Thank you. Abbiamo registrato.